Hey guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's Thursday so I have officially made a gigantic mess as per usual. Now if you're new here I'd like to welcome you. Today we're standing in front of a 55 gallon aquarium that houses a ton of wood cats and um, it had just a jumble of wood, some spawning mops and really no organization to it at all and it had become really overrun with duckweed. So the goal today is to get rid of as much duckweed as possible, really clean the living daylights out of this aquarium and set it up in a way that it'll be easier for me to manage. Now I don't want to use substrate in this aquarium. Um, I don't plan on having it heavily planted with any plants that utilize nutrients from the substrate and it's going to be um, set up in a way that these top dwelling fish or these fish that like to hide in nooks and crannies or otherwise are up at the surface like this have a lot of cover there. So I've gathered together a bunch of manzanita driftwood. Um, I'll show you the aftermath of what I took out of the aquarium in a second. I do have a few things that I'm going to throw in pots in there and that'll make it easy for me to move them and remove them as needed to clean or just to revamp this aquarium. And the hope is by setting this up in a way that is better suited to the fish, I will start to have breeding behavior sooner rather than later as a lot of the girls are getting pretty rotund. So let's take a look at what I pulled out, what I want to put back in. Um, I'll vacuum this all out. There's a bunch of a mono shrimp in here that I need to catch out as they will eat fish eggs, which would be counterintuitive to my breeding purposes. Um, and there's also a bunch of assassin snails that I want to try and relocate to another aquarium. This is the wood that I removed from the aquarium and because this tank houses um, assassin snails, it's really, really likely that a lot of this has assassin snail eggs in it. So I need to be really cautious um, as to where I put this wood if I'm going to place it in other aquariums because the eggs will hatch and the babies are super tiny and in a lot of my aquariums I house ornamental snails whose life I'd like to preserve. So I am not sure if I'm going to let this stuff dry out, if I'm going to reuse it and then just continue to remove the assassins manually or exactly what I'm going to do. But you can see all these little catfish are super, super excited by me stirring up this aquarium. Um, because it had such a dense mat of all of these plants as well as the wood, it was very, very difficult to keep the substrate clean. So that's something that I need to address really importantly in this aquarium. So as I wait for that tank to clear up, I'm going to sift through my plants here. There's a whole mishmash of random crap. This is the moss I took out of the aquarium. It's, it's quite a lot. Um, and I'm not sure that I want all of this in there because a lot of times moss will attract debris. But it's also a great natural spawning mop, so it's possible I will. But for now, I'm going to move it out of the side. I have a couple really big Anubias. Um, I have a lump of Bulbitis, which will be going back in because, again, it's a great spawning mop. And I've taken all of these and I've rinsed them pretty thoroughly in the bucket to try and get rid of any duckweed. Um, there's so much moss in this aquarium. Again, moss that I didn't put in there, but somehow has found its way. Um, and then I had a pot of Rotala that was just left over. More moss. Oh my word. A little tiny rhizome of Bulbitis. Some tiny rhizomes of narrow leaf. More narrow leaf. Um, and then I have a pot of the Hygrophilus siamensis. Just this one um, that I think I'm going to put into a more permanent pot. Again, as I mentioned, I don't really want substrate in this aquarium because the fish don't utilize it and it's just more for me to maintain. So I have a couple of these little um, just terracotta pots that are like 50 cents at the craft store. I'm gonna put some soil in, pot these plants. And then what that will mean is that if I need to supplement them with fertilizers, I can easily stick a root tab into this pot and sort of control where the, the plants are in the aquarium. Also be able to move them pretty easily and just um, have it be a neater environment. I'm gonna grab some gravel to throw in the bottom to hold it, hold it in so that the substrate doesn't fall through.
So I'll just fill my pot part of the way with soil. Get rid of the rock wool in this. Um, I've shown you guys this quite a bit in the past. This is mainly just to make sure um, any fertilizers that were put on there by the nursery don't be, go into the water column of the aquarium. Plus it's just messy, so you just pull off as much as you can, trying to not break the roots and then swish it in some tank water to remove the remnants. Now this won't be the final manifestation of the scape of this aquarium, but it's a start. Put the roots into the pot, and then I'll top it with some more soil, and then it will be able to be added to the aquarium. And I'm, for the soil, I'm just using Tropica because I have lots of it around. You could really use anything. You could do a dirt and sand cap. You could do um, the organic potting soil. You could use gravel if you were going to supplement. But for me, this works just fine. Um, I also have some water sprite that some, one of you gave to me and this mystery plant that someone gave to me. And I think I'm going to pot this one as well because it has a nice long leaf structure. It looks like an August folia or something, but I'm really not sure. It's just been floating in the aquarium for quite a while. So you can see it has a lot of these aerial roots from searching for nutrients. So I'm going to pot it up and just see if we can uh, nurse this thing back to health and figure out what it is. Now to add the pots to the aquarium, you just let them slowly fill with water so that all the substrate doesn't fall out and then gently place them where you want them. Now I'm just going to stick them in here for now until things clear up and I can see where I want their final placement to be. But again, just let, let the pot slowly fill with water and then place them where you want them. So this is immediately upon refill and you can see how stirred up it is. It ended up being about a 50% water change. And again, I just threw in some wood I had around and the plants that were in the aquarium, I wedged back into the nooks and crannies of the wood and then I placed the pot of the largest plant there and the two smaller ones here just so that this area is really dense in order for the fish to have adequate hiding places. Um, but I did leave their spawning mop in here over by the flow because I found with these fish in particular, they like to spawn near the flow. So that is hooked up over there. Um, and once this clears up in about 20 minutes, I'll show you guys again. And I also have my container of assassins and a mono shrimp that I need to relocate somewhere else in the fish room. So it still has some clearing up to do, but it's only been about 20 minutes, but you guys get the idea. Now there's all sorts of nooks and crannies for those little catfish to hide in and lay their eggs in, and yet still plenty of open water for me to enjoy them. Um, they are a super rewarding little fish, and I just wanted to set things up a bit better for them. You can see them wedged in the wood there. Um, once they are adjusted from me, completely tearing this tank apart and putting it back together. We'll get some good footage of them swimming around, utilizing the space, and probably a feeding video as well. I'm most excited that I seem to have gotten rid of the duckweed, which was a real pain in the butt in this aquarium. Um, I, one of my New Year's resolutions for the fish room is to get rid of duckweed once and for all because it is just so irritating. Uh, and it's a risk for cross-contamination if it gets stuck to my arms. Uh, but anyway, this is the preliminary rescape on this aquarium. Now, it's not finished, it's not done, but um, at some point we'll come back to it and finish it up.